Hello, and welcome to another Rolling Cloud Academy video. I am Nutrix, and together we will dive deep inside the synthesis of the Jupyter 8 model expansion for Xenology Pro. If you don't have Xenology Pro, or if you don't know how to use it, if you don't know how to use the Rolling Cloud Manager, please visit the Rolling Cloud Academy YouTube channel to get all the information on how to do that. Now, keep in mind that a model expansion is an expansion to Xenology Pro. So you need to have Xenology Pro installed to be able to have access to the model expansions. This model expansion recreates the classic Jupyter 8 sound and synthesis. It's a classic that everybody knows, and it's still, by today's standard, one of the best polyphonic synth ever built. If you want to know more, let's go. A traditional looking Jupiter 8 will be like this. The layout is very efficient for a synthesizer where you put your hands on it and you work with it. But in a screen of a computer, the usage of the space, the visual space, is not as optimized as it should be. So instead of having this visual recreation, we have this flat design, very efficient in the way you use the space, and it's very easy to navigate through it. So remember that the Jupiter 8, even if it's super powerful and it sounds really nice, is still a fairly simple synthesizer. You have two oscillators, VCO1 and VCO2. We have one mixer to combine these two oscillators. You go into one filter that is at the same time a high pass filter plus a low pass filter. And you have a VCA for the volume. You have one LFO and we have the section where you control the VCO modulation. So the VCO modulator. You also have two envelopes, two ADSR envelopes, you know, envelope one and envelope two. Uh, and I mean, by default, envelope two is for the volume, but it can be assigned to something else depending on where you go in and you assign these. You also have at the right top corner, this screen here, which is the graphic of the internal schematic. So you see that envelope one can control the VCO modulation. It can control the VCF, envelope 2 can control the VCF and the VCA. So sometimes when you're not sure how everything is connected, you can just go and look at this. So this is, a, for me, it's been very useful when I was wondering how this, you know, if I bring this, I don't know, the cross modulation, well, it's actually modula VCO2 modulating VCO1. Oh, okay. So that's how it does. That's where it's happening. So I'm going to listen to VCO1 being modulated. Fine. I understand. So, and keep in mind that if you're wondering what something does inside the Jupyter 8, you can go into menu and select help. You will have a big, nice laid out PDF showing you everything that is Xenology related and all of the description of every knob and every button and every slider inside the Jupyter 8. So if you're not sure what one does, you know, oh, this is the solo unison mode or this is just a unison polyphonic mode this is the solo and poly okay fine i understand this what is condition well it simulates the changes that occur as a unit ages so it's a sound of an older synthesizer okay fine so if you're not sure you can always go back to this and have all of the information right there for you we're, we're just talking about condition here condition as the capacity to change the way a synthesizer react to mimic the old age of a synthesizer. So it could be that the parts, the chips are in it, the resistance and all that stuff are drying up as they're getting older, so they don't react the same way. It could be that the filter is duller, whatever it is that they can uh, mimic and recreate to make it sounds like the original old Jupiter 8. Well, you can actually play with that to change that, give it more of a the the sound of uh, ages if you want pitch drift is something that you have in a lot of synthesizers some are really bad at keeping the pitch others are really good at it uh, playing with pitch drift you can actually give it more of a analog reaction if you want so depending on how you want it you can play with that you have portamento on or off and the type of, do you want it to be the original portamento uh, or you want it to be linear, exponential, or exponential too. So there's two different ways to change it. There's also a parameter expansion. So the parameters that you have everywhere in the synthesizers are limited to the original values or capacities. If you press expansion, 
then it will actually go further. You know, it, it will not be limited by the original value. So it will not mimic a Jupiter 8 the same way. It will expand its possible values for each of the controllers. So it could be that the LFO has a lower and higher speed, whatever it is. So you can play with that if you want to experiment with that. And then there's the way the synthesizer will respond. You want it to be polyphonic, solo, unison, but still polyphonic, and unison, but solo which is more of a traditional unison mode. Now I only have the VCO1 and listening because I've got the volume of this one. Everything else is turned off. The envelopes are ADSR with no reaction. So what I have is really just the sound of this one. I can open up the filter. Okay, so I've got my initialized sound. I, of course, I can combine these two. I have two of them. I can play with the pitch. I have to find That's the original super saw sound that people try to recreate is you have two saws and they're they out of tune. They will be out of tune if you fine tune them. So you have that little, you know, movement in it. And if you go in unison mode, you want it to Massive sound is just that. It's two sawtooth combined together, a little bit out of tune with the fine tuning. You hear the two because there's a volume for both of them, and we're in unison mode. It's just like massive sound. And because it's still unison polyphonic, you just like a big, big sound playing. Let's put it back. So he's like eight different. So you got like 16 VCO playing it right now. Just massive sound. Okay, let's go back here. Go back to poly mode. We just have two now. Okay. So let's go back to just having one. So how this one works? Well, you can change the range, which is basically the octave. You have the waveform, triangular waveform, sawtooth, square. And this one is the pulse. It's a square, but you can change the pulse. And the pulse width is here. And the VCO modulator section, if you play with this, changing the shape of the square wave and it creates that movement. Now that's the manual movement. If you put LFO as a source of modulation, then you're using the LFO here to control the value of the pulse width on this one. So now you hear that movement now. You have the speed of the LFO and you have the depth of the movement. Average, this is nothing. We'll put it average, okay. You have the shape. You hear the going down and then it goes up. You have the two values here. The two values a little faster. Two steps of the square wave as an LFO. And this one is sample and hold, which is basically a random steps. Now this is going to be useful when we're going to play with the filter. Let's actually get rid of it for now. It's gone. And let's go back to VCO2. So VCO2, what do you have? If we bring that one up, we heard that one before. Let's actually take this one, and then there now there's ways to combine the two of them. Of course, you can just listen to them. It's you. You can play with that if you need to. But also, what you have is cross-modulation and sync. Now, cross-modulation, again, if you go back to this little screen here, it says that the VCO2 cross-modulate VCO1. So this will actually, if you activate this, so it's like having an LFO. It's like having FM synthesis. It's basically, Oscillator 2 being a modulator for the oscillator 1. If we bring that down, and we 
bring that up. We only hear the one being cross-modulated, which is the VCO1. If we bring the VCO2 up and bring down the VCO1, you hear that this one is clean. There's, there's nothing happening with this one. But if we listen to the first one, we have that modulation because the two have that weird metallic sound. And if we bring it down, Often, if we bring it to very just a basic value, not too much value, low, you still have like it become a little bit of you know aggressive sound. Create that movement in it. Well, it's easy with that to create these bell type of sounds. If you bring some. having higher and pitch. So these kind of type of bell sound because there's a lot of inharmonics in it. Interesting. And, and still I haven't used anything in the filter. It's just that cross modulation happening. You could find it. So it's very high pitch, metallic sound, very FM sounding. So that's a cross modulation, okay? There's also the sync value here, but it's forcing VCO1 to sync to this speed. So it changes the shape of oscillator one. It makes it so it sounds in tune with the second one, even if we're not listening to the second one, because if I bring it up, if I turn this thing off, if I change this, two separate notes. If I turn the sync in, VCO1 now sound in tune with the second one. You have this nice... This nice... Wow, kind of almost talking. Sync. So what you're doing here you have the VCO2. This one is affecting the first one. You have this envelope coming and coming down here. And the envelope is assigned to, to VCO1. But you hear the second, like this one is moving but stays in tune in tune with the first one. The VCO2 can be normal or low frequency, but then when it's in low frequency mode, like it's an LFO, it's basically to use it with the cross modulation to become a low modulation. You can still modulate this one using VCO modulator. We have the envelope 2, which is mostly for the volume. So if you change this one. And the key fall is basically as you go either up the keys or down the keys, the attack and the, the release will be shorter or longer depending if you're going up or down the key. So higher notes will be shorter in time and, and lower notes will be longer in time. Now these two are combined inside one filter. You have the high pass filter, it's always there. Plus you get the low pass filter that closes everything from the top. So now I have nothing playing. So, by default, the filter that we have is the roll-in filter with the resonance. And it becomes... Yeah. 
You also have an M and an S. So three different types of the filter algorithms. The Roland, the M, and the S. These are two different ways to play it. So let's go back to the Roland style. You've got minus 12 dB per octave, so it's a two-pole slope, and the minus 24 dB per octave, which is the four-pole slope. Again, you have the envelope one or two that can be used to control this. So if I go with envelope one, Depending on how low you put the frequency here, it's the low value of the envelope here. And the top value of the envelope here is how much you assign the envelope modulation. So if you want it to open and close as much as possible, you put the frequency to zero. It's just close everything. You want this to open to the maximum. Mine is it longer. Resonance is at max. Less resonance. Some sustain. Some release. Again, key follow means if you, as you go up the keys, the frequency cutoff point will go up. And if you go down the keys, the frequency cutoff point will go down. So we'll, the lower note will be more muffled if you want. And if you put it at zero, it's going to be the same value of cutoff value everywhere on the keys. So, you know, you put it where you find it's more natural for you for the sound. You also have the filter modulation. You're actually taking the LFO and you're assigning it to the cutoff point. You hear that? And one thing that is cool is that you have a delay time on the LFO. So let's say we push this halfway, even to further. Here. So if I play, and it's only when I keep my finger holding the key that it has the time for the delay time to be done and go into the LFO. So if not, as you play, it will be right there at the beginning. Okay, so filter modulation. So it's often cool to have some filter modulation that is slow with a cool and, you know, well prepared envelope. So you have always a little bit of movement in it from the filter, but you still have the general movement of the envelope to have the sound that you're looking for. have the VCA, which is the volume amplifier, and there's four different levels of LFO modulation. So nothing, zero, one, I'm going to put the filter at zero. So this is the depth of the modulation coming from the LFO. Then you can add effects, the MFX. So you have delay, you have multi-tap delay, you get a lot of these. These are basically the one that you find inside Xenology Pro. If you want to have some chorus on it, even the, I have a Juno 106 chorus. Let's actually look at some of the sound that is part of the original factory presets. See, 
at this one, you have two VCO, two, two VCO playing, they're low, both of them. They both have the sawtooth, not so loud. We have some movement here with the VCF. It's fairly close, some resonance, and then you have some opening up and closing. It's in poly mode. The rest of it is very clean. Look at this one. This one is a fifth. Because this one is the tune. It was, you have a pulse wave and that has a pulse width modulation from the LFO here. But you have at the same time, you have a sawtooth playing and you have a 24 dB per octave, mostly open, you know, lower than halfway, some resonance, and envelope 2 is modulating this, which is also modulating volume. And envelope 1 is not really being used. A cool little sound. Sync lead. So now on this one you have the two VCO playing. This one is higher in pitch, this one is lower. This one is in sync, so it means that so this one sounds just normal with some LFO modulating it. And at the same time you have this. And that's the one here. Well this is happening, you also have an envelope. sync. So what's happening is now the polarity is down. So it's going down instead of opening up. It normally would be opening up and closing. Now it's the other way around. So inverting the polarity of the envelope could be also a way to closing down something instead of opening up, which is normally what the envelope does. It goes from, you know, zero value to maximum value. Now you go the other way. Uh, this becomes maximum, this becomes zero. So, inverse the movement, which is quite interesting. Now that we've made a tour out of it, I hope that you'll be able to, you know, play around with it and use these notions to tweak them. Start with a sound that you like, tweak it so it becomes yours, and have fun. Don't be scared. Nothing will be broken. <laughs> Worst case, you're going to load back the original sound and play again. It's there to be changed, moduled. Try all the modulation, try everything. Save when you find something useful and interesting. Oh, by the way, if you want to save, <laughs> just to be sure, you press right. I suggest that when you press right to save, you, s you create a new bank, you press new, you type in and say, my design. And then in my design, I'm gonna take this one and say, write this one. I can actually save it and say, well, you know, test one enter. Now my first sound that I just saved is here. I'm going to close this one now. Click on test one. There's my sound. And it's in my bank here. My design. That's where it is. That's it. Have fun. Make those sound yours. Thank you for watching. Put your comments below.